Hey everyone, welcome back to our coverage of CES 2025. This is day three, and let me tell you, there's so much cool stuff here, it's crazy. I've been keeping track of everything from amazing AI home gadgets to incredible car prototypes, plus loads of new tech that's showing up everywhere. So, get comfy because we have a lot to cover in this recap. I'll tell you about everything from the biggest car reveals to the smallest, quirkiest gadgets you never knew you needed. Let's dive in. First up, I want to mention the CES opening remarks and the big speeches from today. Gary Shapiro, the boss of the Consumer Technology Association CTA, talked about the theme, collaboration is key. He also mentioned that CTA is celebrating a big milestone, 100 years. He talked about his new book, Pivot or Die, which is all about how businesses need to keep up with new technologies or they'll fall behind. Another important speaker was Martin Lundsted, the president and CEO of Volvo Group. He gave a speech about how important sustainable transportation, especially using electric cars, is for bringing people together. Now, talking about transport, I need to mention the big news from Sony and Honda. The Isla EV, that's spelled A-F-E-L-A. -E we first heard about it last year, but this year we got a closer look. The Isla project is all about making an electric vehicle, EV, that can go up to 300 miles on a single charge, uses advanced LiDAR sensors for safety and navigation, and has a really cool futuristic interior. It includes a new Dolby Atmos sound system, lots of screens, and you can even display messages like happy birthday on the car's front hood. It's priced starting around $90,000, so it's not cheap, but the technology it offers is really interesting. Another cool thing is that the car's assistant uses ChatGPT 4.0. This means you can talk to your car and ask things like, hey, how's traffic? Or what's the quickest route to that new coffee shop? And it will answer you back. The demonstration was a bit rough, but it's still a pretty advanced idea. While we're talking about Honda, they also showed off some unique electric vehicle prototypes, the Series Zero Saloon, and an SUV concept. These cars have a bold, sharp design that might make you think of the Tesla Cybertruck. Very angular and modern. Honda's new design goal is thin, light, and wise, aiming to make their electric vehicles more stylish and lighter. We'll see more about how these designs develop by 2026, but these concept cars at CES definitely got people talking. Let's talk about vehicles for a bit. BMW impressed everyone with their new panoramic iDrive, a huge display across the windshield in their electric NOA class cars. This display shows you your speed, navigation, and even gives AI-driven tips. This could mean that regular buttons in cars might start to disappear. Over at Delta Airlines, CEO Ed Bastian gave a big speech about how AI and better internet connections will change travel. Delta is introducing a new AI voice assistant called Delta Concierge on their Fly Delta app, and they're teaming up with Uber. This means people can earn miles for their flights when they take Uber rides. The speech was full of cool effects like visuals of planes taking off. It was really something, but that's what you expect at CES. Now, switching to home technology, there was plenty to see on day three. One of the most amazing things was the Displac TV, a completely wireless TV. It doesn't even need a power cord because it runs on batteries. You can stick it to your wall with a special suction system and it sets up in less than 10 seconds. What's really smart is that if the battery starts running low, it releases a sticky substance slowly, so the TV won't just fall off the wall. It's quite expensive, costing several thousand dollars, but it's this kind of advanced technology that makes CES exciting. In the WOW category, we have Pocketbook's Ink Poster. This is a big digital frame for art that looks like real ink on paper. You can change the art whenever you want. It comes in three sizes. The smallest is $599, and the largest costs over $1,000. It's expensive but uses very little power, and is great for art fans. Now, onto kitchen and food tech. Kara Water introduced the Kara Pod, 
a device that makes coffee by pulling moisture from the air, like a dehumidifier that makes espresso. It's safe, but the coffee might taste a bit different. iGulu brought out a machine like a Keurig, but for brewing craft beer at home. Just add ingredients, press a button, and it does the rest. For gardening lovers, Garden has a hydroponic system that makes growing herbs and veggies easy with automatic lighting and watering. For outdoor enthusiasts, there's the Bird Buddies Wonder Blocks, stackable units that attract wildlife, along with a new solar-powered camera to watch your garden's visitors. For those who dislike yard work, check out Yarbo, a versatile yard robot that can mow lawns, blow leaves, or clear snow. Segway also showcased their new Nymo, a quiet, simple robotic lawnmower. So, if you need help in the garden, CES Day 3 had lots of robotic solutions to offer. On the home security front, Swan introduced the Extreme 4K camera. This AI-driven camera can tell the difference between friends and strangers, and even talk to greet guests or scare off intruders. Another cool security device is PCL's new Smart Lock, which opens your door when you hover your palm over it, recognizing you by the pattern of veins in your hand. We also checked out the Birdie Feeder 2 from NetView's Birdie line. It's a bird feeder with a built-in camera that has three lenses, allowing you to see birds from different angles. Similarly, Realiz's Birdie Smart Bird Bath can automatically adjust water temperature and clean itself. Turns out bird baths can be high-tech too. Shifting to smaller AI gadgets, Tuke showed off TAP, a smart light switch that can control your home's energy and automation with just a touch. Weok introduced a smart cane for people who are visually impaired. It helps avoid obstacles, connects with navigation apps, and gives spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. Elephant Robotics unveiled MetaPanda AI, an ultra-realistic robotic panda that can understand language and emotions. Then, there's the Jethro Vi 1 AI mouse from Shenzhen ZFF Technology. It's a computer mouse that can convert speech to text and translate languages in real time, and it works offline, which is great for keeping your data private. For audio enthusiasts, Kanto had some exciting news. They introduced the Kanto Renz, a new set of desktop speakers in a striking bright orange. On day three, they also presented the Kanto Uki bookshelf speakers. These are small, colorful, and expected to be priced around $199, although they're still prototypes and won't be available until the second half of 2025. Like Kanto's previous speakers, these are expected to be stylish and deliver great sound. Continuing with audio, Ano unveiled the Creator series, which includes the GX 10 dB and GX 30 Arc powered monitors. These speakers come with a variety of connections like Bluetooth, USB-C, optical, and HDMI. Ano also introduced the Icon Hi-Fi series for serious audio files, featuring a P80 network preamplifier, an M80 power amplifier, and a D50 integrated amp designed for those who demand the best sound quality. For gamers, Razer introduced the Blade 16 laptop with the latest NVIDIA RTX 5090 GPU and AMD AI9 HX370 CPU, featuring a 240Hz OLED display and a vapor chamber cooling system. Asus also released new ROG Strix SCAR laptops in 16-inch and 18-inch models, with advanced Intel and NVIDIA GPUs up to 64GB of RAM designed to provide top-notch gaming performance. Lenovo revealed the ThinkBook Plus Gen 6, an innovative rollable laptop whose screen can expand from 14 inches to 16.7 inches with just a push of a button. It's equipped with an Intel Core Ultra 200V CPU, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. In the TV sector, Panasonic launched the Z95B, their brightest and most advanced OLED TV, featuring improved cooling and better performance than the previous Z95A. Nanoleaf introduced the 4DV2, a flexible, color-changing light strip for TVs, offering an easy setup and a dynamic viewing experience. 
We also revisited the Displac TV, the completely wireless TV I mentioned before. Samsung introduced an ultra-bright QD OLED TV, the 95F, and talked about improvements to their home AI with Bixby and new picture optimization features. Turning back to some unique gadgets, we saw the Hypershell, a wearable device that might help you run faster or with less effort, though it raised some questions during the demo. Another cool gadget was the Arzen Zip, the world's first ultra-portable tri-fold projector, perfect for watching movies while camping with its 90-minute battery life. Okay, that wraps up our big recap of day three. Thanks for sticking with me through all this. If you've read this far, you're probably as excited about all these gadgets as we are. Don't forget to leave any questions or tell us what you liked most about today's coverage in the comments. Until next time, just remember, if it can be powered by AI, it probably will be, and sooner than you think.